Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Folks, today we're going to bring something uh, into the equation that's on a cheerier side. And the title of this is going to be Seven Ways to Boost Your Happiness. Before I do that, there are a couple things I just want to talk about. Number one, today I spent some time in Mastic Beach by that church that we spoke about the other day. And I just want to tell you that what I have decided to do, instead of going into the church and uh, uh, talking to people there and offering pro, pro bono my services as a addiction recovery coach, and what I decided to do is to go back to my old stomping grounds, being Mastic Beach. What I did is I walked up and down Neighborhood Road and randomly uh, spoke to individuals just walking the streets or getting out of their car, going to the laundromat or to Andrew Pantry. And uh, in, hopefully in this video I'm going to attach those interviews. I believe there were four interviews, uh, the longest one being 13 and a half minutes and um, two individuals. Uh, there was that one that was 13 and a half minutes. She was an older lady and uh, her name was Cookie and uh, she, uh, in, in, to make a long, long interview shorter because I hopefully you'll hear the interview, what she told me basically was that um, uh, she had a lot of tragedy in her life. Uh, she was an alcoholic, she was also into drugs and then she found uh, the Lord uh, back in 1978 I believe it was. Uh, however, her family uh, did not uh, turn to their higher power, so she lost a son on William Floyd Parkway, I believe she said he hit a tree. One of her ex-husbands, uh, she was always afraid to even let him go into the bathroom uh, because he was always under the influence and she was afraid that if he would lock himself in the bathroom in case he would have a situation she couldn't get in, so she always used to tell him, do not lock the bathroom door. And I find that to be very uh, interesting because uh, this individual that she sp uh, speaks of uh, refused to seek help. Anyway, you are going to hear that interview. And then another lady I spoke to, uh, she uh, was sober for the longest time. And then her daughter, who is a, a drug addict or a uh, alcoholic, one of the two or both, came to visit her. And during the time of her visit, uh, this individual uh, fell off the wagon and uh, drank excessively. Uh, now she's sober and sober for quite some time again. Uh, but what she had said, I found to be so, so fascinating. And it's something that I thought about in the back of my mind for the longest time. Folks, what Neighborhood Road in Mastic Beach or any road in any community needs a person that will go walk up and down and every once in a while give out uh, his or her um, uh, information, in other words, a phone number, because there are people that are out there walking the streets, uh, whether they're drunk or high or depressed, that would love a phone number that they, they can turn to to speak to someone. Folks, I am not kidding about this. When my wife and I left from Neighborhood Road, it wasn't halfway down William Floyd Parkway that an individual young lady called me and she asked me what is uh, my business card about, what is my uh, uh, methods, what are they about. What I told her is that I'm going to give her a call, which I will be doing after this video, and what I'm going to do is discuss uh, certain methods with her. Um, uh, I ran into another individual uh, that was out there. Um, he was um, obviously very intoxicated, and mind you, this was all before 12 o'clock, but he was humble enough to admit to me that um, on Friday nights until Sunday nights he drinks to the um, to the point of blackouts where he doesn't remember doing anything and he spends approximately two hundred fifty dollars in two days on alcohol meaning beer for him he at this point told me he already had a case of beer just about this was all before twelve o'clock folks so my point here is, is that I was going to concentrate merely on the church the Agape Church on Neighborhood Road, but I found that just walking the streets on Neighborhood Road in Mastic Beach, Long Island, New York, I will be better, where uh, I will serve my Lord better by doing that to just randomly walking up to people instead of having people in church walk up to me. And people in church, uh, I don't want to disturb the pastor's uh, sermon as such, and uh, so when I do this, and this is what I decided to change or amend my original plan uh, because an action plan 
is in place for the goal, which is to get sobriety and, and spread the word on sobriety and my higher power will give me an achievement. So my action plan now changed from not going to the Agape Church the next nine more Sundays, but in fact to just go out there and speak to people randomly uh, on Neighborhood Road. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's always going to be between the hours of 11 and 12 o'clock uh, on Sundays reach out to me. My phone number is 844-405-HELP. My text number is 631-599-0218. Go to my website, Clearview. My cat must be around again. I'm itching the nose. Clearviews.info. This young lady, her name, Cookie, I explained what, what does the clear in the Clearview stand for, and she was uh, overwhelmed when I described her because it is a community's lessons that empower addiction recovery. Mastic Beach was originally my community, although I live in the Hamptons now. That is where most of my alcoholism took effect. That is when I hit rock bottom. So why not give whatever lessons I have learned to empower that community as well as my video, com uh, my video audience community with addiction recovery. And then when I told her about Clear Reform, which is my other website, that's my coaching website, she was just about as shocked because she told me that just last week her sermon in church was about when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and as your personal Savior, you are being transformed, reformed into a new uh, person. And that is exactly what my coaching does for people that seek my help through my coaching at clearreform.com it is to help you transform you from the addiction side to the recovery side to reform you folks with the suggestions that I was getting from the few people I got to talk to I feel that I am better served to my community if I just on Sundays between 11 and 12 just walk up and down neighborhood road and just witness and I try to catch people on audio not on video and I do ask for uh, permission I'm, I'm hoping I'm able to create all this and mix it into this video for for us uh, for um, September 22nd so let's hope it all works out but it's all in God's hands now I want to give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point he is my mentor, my, my professor that taught me how to be a master addiction recovery coach. He has two entities towards his business. The first entity would be to do exactly what I do, which is addiction recovery coaching. He will walk you from addiction to recovery. You can reach him at 844-414-8444. You can also find him on www.startim.com. Uh, excuse me, S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. Let me say that very slowly so I don't miss out. It's www.S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. That spells starting point, short M-N is for Minnesota.com. Reach out to him. Now, if you want to be a coach like I am, like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez and probably millions of other people globally, if you carry or if you possess personality, passion, and professionalism, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it was your own, and you're still battling with it, because I battle with my addiction every day, but I'm learning to live with it. I don't succumb to it, and I believe one of my uh, people I interviewed said it best, that the devil is the addiction, and that's why it's so important that you have your higher power. I read yesterday that in order... To live with addiction, you have to include your higher power and whatever that higher power with me, uh, with uh, is with you. With me, it's my God, but I have to, and I repeat, I have to include him in this plan, in this chapter, in my book, which we're going to discuss later again. So reach out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444, or you can find him at startingpointmn.com. Again, we're going to talk about the seven ways to boost your happiness. And, you know, I wanted to do this because today is uh, a day that I felt very uh, rewarded by the mere fact that I got to talk to people that are out in the everyday life. You'll hear in the background cars driving by. This is not just me with an action plan 
to set a goal to achieve that goal. This is reality. People that I just walk up to and talk to them. And uh, this lady, Cookie, she started crying because she went through so much hardship because of the devil's addiction plan for anyone. Whether you're black, white, yellow, it doesn't matter. Whether you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Addiction, if it can, will get you. However, if you just reach out to your higher power and have the will to end it starting today, you will do that. The one fellow who, that I spoke to who drinks a lot, his uh, friend was standing right across from him. He said to him, all it is is right here. And I said, you're right. It is right there. It's a will, willpower to stop and the grace of God. So let's jump into this. Uh, number one on my list is just to be able to laugh and to laugh daily. Research, research shows that laughing doesn't just signal happiness, it produces it. Like sunshine produces positive results and night, uh, darkness uh, produces negative results. Happiness produces, uh, laughing produces happiness. When we laugh, our stress hormones decrease and our endorphins rise. Endorphins are the same brain chemicals associated with the runner's high you get from exercise. Live to 100. Some people say if you laugh constantly, I mean, it's not guaranteed that we all will, but you can live to a possibly 100 by laughing every day. So why don't we just laugh some more? Laughing is also good for your heart. A study found that only 8% of heart patients who were made to laugh daily had a second heart attack within a year, compared to with 42% without laughing. Studies show our bodies can't differentiate between fake or real laugh. You'll get the health boost either way. So even if, like my wife say, oh, Ralph, people only knew the way you really, when you smile and you laugh, and when you have a fake laugh. Well, according to the studies, it doesn't matter if it's a fake laugh like this or a real laugh. It doesn't matter. Either way, it boosts uh, the, um, the chemicals in your body to give you that lift that you need. So you can even fake it until you make it. Laugh in your car, in the shower, force yourself to laugh, start laughing in a few minutes, for a few minutes every single day, folks. Just laugh. Start changing your attitude. Let me just push this down because I feel like I, okay, there we go. Is that better, folks? I hope so. Start changing your attitude. That's right. I'm talking to you, pessimists. A Harvard University study found that optimists are not only happier, but 50% likely to have heart disease. A heart attack or a stroke. Let me read that again. That's right. I'm talking to you pessimists. A Harvard University study found that optim uh, optimists are not only happier, but are 50% less, less likely to have a stroke. That's the positive side of you that we continuously talk about. It turns out that keeping a positive outlook actually offers protection against heart attack disease or cardiovascular disease or otherwise known as heart attack. It's a proven fact that you need to be positive. Folks, me walking on Neighborhood Road was a sign of positive hope for the people that are out there that have negative feelings. Learn from people who are already happy and I know we have people in our lives. Folks, Although I look very serious uh, during these videos, I try to be as happy and as positive as possible throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year, throughout my life. That all changed when I started changing that chapter in my book of life in 2013. We're going to go into that. Denmark has earned a top spot on European Commission's Eurobarometer for well-being and happiness every year since 1973. I found out that Copenhagen is the happiest place to live. Only 2% of people work full-time hours there. Unemployment is very low. Cost of living is, is, is average. But there are negative sides. and There's a lot of drugs, legal drugs that is, and legal other stuff, prostitution. And when the United Nations went on a hunt for the happiest nation in the world, it ranked Denmark number one. So what makes Danes more satisfied with their lives? Sure, things like life expectancy, gross domestic product, and low corruption rate help. 
But the overall level of happiness in Denmark has more to do with the generosity that is common among citizens. Their freedom to make life choices and strong social support system, according to the UN. Folks, it goes right back to uh, what I always talk about. Did you hear that part? Generosity. We, as humans, need to be more generous with each other. Doesn't matter if it's just with your family and loved one or your neighbor, but we need to be able to share. If you have a full loaf of bread, why not share and give half the loaf to somebody in need? You will still have a half a loaf of bread. Either way, you will still have that. Remember this, the analogy that I have given before, and I will, under protest of some, give it again. That is that there is never, ever, a U-Haul truck following a hearse. What does that mean? What that means is that a hearse symbolizes you in your coffin going to your burial. And the U-Haul symbolizes what you potentially think might be dragging your personal belongings with you. You cannot go to your resting ground or resting place, your forever resting place with anything other than what you came to this earth with, which is nothing. So why not eliminate the U-Haul truck following you and why not start sharing? A half a loaf is better than no loaf of bread. Than no loaf at all, I should say. How many times do we throw a half a loaf of bread or something into the garbage because we don't even eat it? So why not share it with your neighbor or a loved one? Why not share some of your money with someone else? Why not share some of the furniture that you were just having sitting around with somebody that might need it? Start today. Work less. The Danes, meaning Denmark people, seem to strike a great work balance which ups their happiness level. Of course, the less you work, the better off you are. Simply put, they don't overwork. In fact, an average work week in Denmark is only 33 hours. Only 2%, like I just told you, uh, work more than 40 hours a week. Almost 80% of mothers in Denmark return to work after having a child, but they balance, they balance their free time between families, weekly happy hour with their girlfriends, and participating in community programs and I hope the happy hour is not consistent uh, or it doesn't consist drugs and or alcohol we can only hope that but build your social network by simply uh, being social you could slow down your biological age you need to laugh and you need to have friends research, research shows that a strong social support system can shorten our telomeres tell it's t-e-l-o-m-e-r-e-s Telemorius. A telemorius are the tiny caps on our DNA chromosomes that indicate our cellular age. According to experts, no friends can equal shorter telemorius and in turn a shorter life. Other studies have shown that loneliness leads to higher rates of depression, health problems, and stress. Of course it does. Solution, have at least one close friend to boost your happiness level and health not only daily, weekly, and yearly. Volunteer. Folks, exactly what I did is what volunteering is. It is to go out to talk to people in need. It is to go out like this cookie lady at the end of my interview. I believe it was after I shut off the uh, audio. I offered, because she had a walker in her hand, I offered if she needed anything Handy wise done at home because she doesn't have a husband anymore cutting the grass to call me that is volunteering volunteering is to go out and to tell people how to live with their addiction volunteering is to go to the church and help them volunteering is to go to the nursing home and spend a little time with the seniors there let's see what they say people who volunteer are happier with their lives it builds your self-esteem than those who don't volunteer according to dozens of different studies the United Nations even credits volunteerism as one of the reasons Denmark is the happiest nation in the world. 43% 40 of Dan Danes regularly give back to their community. That's almost half. We can't even get 1% of this, uh, 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 what is it, the population in the United States to help each other. People are in it for themselves, and, and it's really sad. And I think never is too soon to start changing.
I mean, never is not too soon to start shaving. Or, or today, I should say. I don't know. I worded that wrong. What I'm trying to say here is let's start changing that today. We'll never catch up to 40%, 43% like Dan Danish people. But let's try to get it up to 10%. What this says is that 15% of Americans only do it. That's a huge difference. I just said 1% or off the top of the head. So if they're saying 15%, let's shoot for 25%. The joy of helping others starts early. It starts early, whether it's in your age group or early in the day. I don't know what they mean. Let's see. A 2012 study found that children prefer to give than to receive. So they meant by age. And that is all instilled by being a good role model. And we're going to talk about that too. Researchers gave two groups of toddlers snacks and then asked one group to give their treats away. The children who gave away their treats showed greater happiness about sharing than their possessions, suggesting that the act of personal sacrifice was emotionally rewarding, researchers say. What we need to do is we need to focus on experiences. Danes also pay less attention to gadgets and things and more attention to building memories. You know what, folks? I don't know why we narrowed this down to the Danes. This came from a uh, website um, of the CDC uh, motivational uh, aspect uh, of the website. So obviously, the way they keep talking about the Danes, it must be that uh, they truly have a more happier life. Studies show that people who focus on experiences over things, in other words, not the materialistic things, have higher levels of satisfaction long after the moment of experience has passed. These videos, I could watch these in a, two months from now and still be motivated about it. Too much stuff tends to uh, often lead into debt. <laughs> Don't we know that as a society as such? Not to mention the time and stress associated with keeping up with those gadgets, cars, properties, clothes, and etc. You always want to be over the Joneses next door. Let's stop doing Let's worry about what goes on under our own roof, which takes me to my next topic. What happens under your own roof is the most important thing on raising a family. The book of life starts at the birth of your child, started at your birth, and will end at the death of you or and your children at one point or another, which I hate to even bring up, but it's the truth of the matter. We have a beginning and an end. That's the book of life. We have many chapters in between that book. For an example, my book of life started in 1961 when I was born. Between 1961 and 1979, my parents helped me write the chapters in my book of life. And they should have included, which they did, anything that's positive in my upbringing. Things like not drinking in front of your children, not smoking in front of your children, not using profanity, and certainly not hitting another person. Those things need to be included in the book of life of your own and need to be included in raising children. It is up to you as a parent to, from zero to 18 at least, make sure that your children have you included in writing their chapters in their book of life? So my book of life was written in between me and my parents, and then in 1979 I started writing my I started writing my own chapters. Those chapters included going to graduating high school, going to college, joining the Marine Corps. We're going to fast forward to 1981 in my book of life now. 1981, I'm sitting in boot camp. Uh, it was a Sunday in church, and the chaplain asked me to come talk to him, which I did. And he noticed that I had a gift uh, or a, uh, a knack of uh, being able to communicate well with my fellow recruits, future Marines, that I was also very motivated, and I also had a heart uh, when it came to a recruit being down, whether it being missing their family, possibly getting a Dear John a letter somehow, uh, that I was there to lift this person up and to motivate. So the chaplain said, Ralph, could you please become a lay leader? Now you folks that are not into the military as much might not know what a lay leader is. And what a lay leader is, is a uh, person between the recruits and the chaplain. A liaison, shall we say. Almost identical between addiction and recovery, a coach would be a liaison. So I said, okay. And of course I 
thought to myself, what's in it for me? But he already answered that before I could even ask him. He said, I'm going to give you some extra soda and you can make a phone call home. I was more thrilled about the soda part. Because I will say that calling home probably would have depressed me because I would have missed uh, my family too much about that. Uh, so I, I made a commitment to the United States Marine Corps to go through their almost four months of boot camp. And uh, I did so without communicating with my family, uh, verbally at least. So that chapter was written. And d right after boot camp, now mind you, from 1961 all the way to 1981, there was alcohol already involved in most of my chapters, at least the last 10 of them, no, the last 7 of them in those 20 years. Tasting here and there, and then gradually building up to drinking. From 1981, I'm going to fast forward all the way to 2009, which was, um, uh, no, let's fast forward from 1981 to 1983. You don't want to forget that, which was, I was in Beirut, Lebanon. We had a bombing, a terrorist bombing. We lost... 241 Marines, among other people, such as Navy personnel and civilians. I had an accident there, I was injured, and God kept me alive. And He kept me alive for a reason. At that point, I never even thought about God keeping me alive, nor did I even think about the reason. Now we're going to fast forward from 1983 all the way to 2009. Up in Alaska, every month I'd go and, and uh, give eye care and eyewear to the Eskimos and their veterans up there. I have a really bad accident again. Three years of physical therapy uh, from 2009 to 2000, end of 2011, or beginning of 2012. God kept me alive in 2009. And again, I didn't think about why, or not even about God at all. Although I was brought up in a Christian home, what kept me from thinking about anything other than my alcoholism, or my alcohol, was the addiction. The addiction isolated any thoughts that I wanted to make, any decisions I wanted to make on my own. It totally vacuum sucked me into its own life. So now we're going to fast forward a little further. 2013, what happens? Ralph hits rock bottom. At that point, God extended his arm into the pit of rock bottom and pulled me out. It is then when I started asking for guidance and direction. Because obviously, folks, I couldn't guide or direct my own life. I was so heavily involved in alcohol that I was drinking 10 to 15 shots of vodka a day. So how can I not reach out to someone who could help me, such as my higher power, my God, which he did. Now he took the shield that's been around me to keep me alive all that time, took that shield and let go of the shield because he knew now what he knew back in 1981, and that is that I was born to always be that person in between, whether it's the recruit and the chaplain or the addiction and recovery, that I would be the mouthpiece, the speaker, the servant for God to do that. That is my mission. That mission does not take away from my professional mission, which is optics, which I've been doing all these years. This mission is a mission of humanity. It's a mission of survival. It's a mission of serving my Lord. Yes, I am an addiction recovery coach, and yes, eventually I will be charging, but this mission, as of right now, as of today, when I went on Neighborhood Road, was to extend my help to the community to tell them that my lessons will empower their addiction recovery. Hence, clearviews.info, hence clearreform.com, my websites. It's all based on that. So my chapters in my book of life started changing in 2013 to the tune of, excuse me, of becoming better. I am now writing my chapters in a positive, uh, with positive results, in a positive way with positive results. You can do the same. I'm 52. I still hopefully, with the grace of God, have plenty of time to rewrite and continue writing good chapters in my book of life. How is your book of life looking at this point? If you have a lot of bad chapters, it's never too late to change. You can't change those chapters. I cannot change anything that happened before 2013. I can't even change anything that happened before of today. What I can do, what I did in 2013, is I finally 
reached up and asked for my higher power, my God, for guidance and direction. If your life has come to the point where you feel that you cannot handle it on your own, there is no shame, there is no, uh, hopefully nobody judging you for this, but you need to first admit you have a problem. That would be to say, I have an alcohol, I have a drug problem. And then you need to reach your higher power. Those two have to work together. Remember what I told you in the beginning of this video. I did so much research, research on this. You cannot battle addiction without your higher power. It is impossible. You are not strong enough to do it as a human. You're not strong enough, uh, strong enough as a human to do really anything in life other than being a human. Anything beyond that, because humans will make mistakes, humans will uh, possibly lie, steal, cheat, kill. Those are the only way to get past those things that you're doing in your life is to accept the Lord as your Savior. It is to reach to your higher power. Folks, some people might say that why is it that when people finally admit that they have an addiction and they start working on recovery, that they talk about God. Folks, I'm here to tell you that there is no other way to do it. There is no way. AA is an example. They tell you to reach the higher power. But I'm telling you, you need not to just think about God helping you, but you need to walk the walk and talk the talk. If you want your higher power to help you, you need to, almost like a commercial, go and advertise your higher power. When I spoke to those people today, I told them there is no way to battle addiction without your higher power. And I'm telling you the same. So for those naysayers that are out there and saying, well, I know an individual in my neighborhood who has been sober a year and before, a year ago, he never spoke about God. And now he is or she is. Well, there is an answer for that. There are two answers for that. The first answer would be, well, they have an addiction they didn't know how to live with, and they were constantly not even thinking about their higher power. The addiction just took their life. And the second thing is just because they finally hit rock bottom, and they reached up and they asked for guidance and direction. It's that simple, folks. For the naysayers, it's okay. Let them. Remember all the things in the Bible, what it says, people throwing stones at Christians, people laughing, spitting at Christians. That's okay. Let them. I used to be one of those people that used to laugh at my brother and my sister because they claimed that no matter what, God will take care of the situation. And I used to chuckle and say, well, God's not going to pay my cable and my life bill. But that's not what they were saying. In hindsight, I understand what they're saying is that they trust the Lord to do whatever it is to protect them and to keep them going in life. And all it is is a trust, like a child trusts a parent. That's all it is, folks. So your book of life has all those chapters. Today, September 22nd, is another chapter that you can start rewriting to be better in your life. But that is all on you. Two things you have to do then. You have to admit you have a problem. And it's not just mere words. You're not just going to say, Ralph, I have a problem, and then tomorrow or next week start drinking or doing drugs again. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. That's the bottom line. And when you have hit rock bottom, you need to reach out to God, your higher power. And you have to live a life of not only sobriety and fighting your addiction, but a life that God wants you to live. Now, we're all human. This isn't an on and off switch where one day you're cursing and the next day you're going not to. But when you do find situations where you might use profanity, when you do find situations where you're judging another person, look yourself in the mirror and say, "What is this what God wants me to do? The answer will be no. The answer be no, folks. So I beg of you that if you truly want to start rewriting 
the chapters in your book to start today. You can text me, 631-599-0218. You can call me, 844-405-HELP. You can email me, clearreform at yahoo. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo. Go to my website, www.clearviews.info. Go to my uh, addict, uh, excuse me, my coaching website, www.clearreform.com. And if you are ready to do this today, let's discuss a couple different methods. AA has been around since 1936, has the 12-step program. What they usually ask you to do is, you're, if you're starting today, is to do the next 90 days with 90 meetings. That's not to say to do three in one day and do it for 30 days. They want you to physically be at their meetings 90 days in a row. Sounds very hard to do, but I'm sure with the results that they've had, millions of people that have done it, you can do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it. There's a big difference. I did go four or five meetings and I finally said, Ralph, I need to be more involved in my recovery plan. And that's when, in 2013, I created clearviews.info. My methods, like their 12 steps, has 16 alternative steps. But I allow you, with my 16 alternative steps, steps, to jump around. And it's easy to understand. The 12 step, you have to take certain steps at a certain time. And everything, and I'm not criticizing AA, but everything with AA gets repeatedly over and over again. During recovery and addiction, uh, uh, my cat is pulling on my wire here. During recovery, one needs to learn that um, you need to have fun doing that. You, uh, excuse me one second. Come on, stop it. You need to have fun doing to fight your addiction. So having fun would be to watch videos, to put a face, a voice, to have me mispronounce words like, uh, what was that word that I couldn't pronounce before? Uh, I don't even know where it is now. But anyway, it's, it's things like that. Have fun with games that are on my website. Read articles that are on my website. Those are all things that are fun. It's the tele, telomeris. Telomeris. Oh, it sounds better already. Telomeris. Those words. So it's, these are fun things to do. Fun was today, and this was part of my recovery plan, to go out and speak to people, to hear people's stories. Folks, you're not the only alcoholic out there. You're not the only one that has a substance abuse problem. There are millions globally. It is so good to hear other people's stories because then you can relate to them. So if truly today, September 22nd, 2014 is your day, and you can do the two things, admit and stop denying and reach out to your higher power. You are set for the joy of your life. You will not only feel better daily, you will remember things better daily, People will look at you differently. You'll start looking healthier. You won't be slurring your words anymore. I could, the list is on. I mean, I can go on and on forever. Folks, if today is the day, let's do it. Start today. And if you're one of those people that has a situation where you have to be watched while you're at home because you you feel that you have to go into the fridge and start drinking or you need to go in, into the liquor cabinet what you need to do is possibly check yourself into a rehab center they have the 30 60 and 90 day programs they take insurance they take Medicaid and if you don't have either one of those what you can do is go on your states in other words in my state it's New York State so I would go onto my New York State website and see what programs they have for the uh, for the uh, financial challenge people with no insurance. If you still have a problem, call me 844-405-HELP, text me 631-599-0218 and let me try to help you find it. I'm not saying that I can find anything for you, however I can help because four eyes are better than two eyes. And I do have many different contacts, people that actually um, own um, 
or not owned, but they're presidents and CEOs of rehab centers. Not to say that I can get you in there, but they might be able to find or help me find a solution for you. So if today's your day, congratulations. You will then start counting your days. And when you get to a point like I am, I don't even count days anymore. I don't even count months anymore. I will wait for my years to pass by. Alcohol is not an issue at this point. What is an issue is to continuously fight my addiction. Another issue is to make sure that I'm constantly, and I mean constantly, out there to help. To share my experiences with my community because my lessons will empower your addiction recovery. Clear. So folks, congratulations if today is your day. But we all have to start at home being a role model. Help your children write their chapters in their book of life. Help them. From zero, when they were born, till 17, 18 at least. Mold them to have a well-balanced life so when they go into society, they are prepared. But if you're going to smoke and drink and hit and uh, use profanity around your children daily, the monkey see monkey do attitude will wear right on to them and they'll go into society and blend right in there and they might end up on Jerry Springer, Murray and uh, Steve Walker's and don't be surprised when they say it's because of my mother or my father you should be surprised if they say it when you know that you took them from zero until 17 and 18 and molded them to be a good human a human that is like you and for the folks that are out there and say, well, I'm not going to stop smoking, drinking, or using profanity. Well, let's do it this way then. If you need to smoke, go outside and do it away from your children. If you need to drink, then do it outside the home. If you need to use profanity, definitely don't do it in the home. And if you're out there and you just feel that you need to go around hitting on your wife or your husband, you need to go see counseling. Get some therapy. And if you're the victim listening, then you're constantly being beat up on, call the authorities, call 911. Because a slap here and a punch there could turn to a knife or a gun eventually. And it's so simple to call 911 and have your loved one taken out in handcuffs, possibly to have them get some kind of therapy, then for the authorities to come to your home to take you out in the body bag. I mean, you folks, you really need to start thinking of how is best to be a role model in front of your children. At least do that from 0 to 18 years old. And then when they go out there, hopefully they'll have so much positive results in life because of your leadership. They look at you as their hero. And you are their role model. So if they see you smoke, they think it's okay to smoke. If they see you drink, it's okay to drink, etc. You get the picture, right? Let today be the first day of your new life. Write this date down, September 22nd, 2014, if you decided today is the first day of your new life. Write it down. That will be your anniversary tomorrow, which is 24 hours later, because that's the only way you're going to start with your addiction is every 24 hours at a time one day at a time don't worry about what happened yesterday a week ago a year ago or 15 years ago God if you reach out to him God will forgive you for whatever you have done that is his promise to you folks but God expects you from this point on to work on two things your addiction and you those two things don't let the addiction work on you. You work on the addiction and on you. You work those two things day by day. You will succeed. I'm proof of that. And I used to drink 10 to 15 shots a day. I used to drink so much I'd be passed out and not remember it. So. I used to drink so much I could have died at least two, three times in overdose. One time my wife saved me. That's how much I drank. God shielded me of death, certainly at least four to five times 
two accidents and two to three overdoses. God shielded me because he had a purpose for me and that purpose is to sit in front of this video camera and to witness to you folks about how to live happily, successfully in sobriety. It's to walk the streets on Neighborhood Road. It's to have people call me and tell me what they need help. It's to do my addiction recovery coaching. It's to publish different articles. It's to go on the Googles to dig the dog piles, the Yahoo's, the Bing's. I can continue forever. The Twitters. It's to go and do all this that you see to the world. Because if I get two people out of this one video, I was successful. Me being the one, because now I have refreshed my mind about sobriety for today, and hopefully you being the other. Two people. If I get more out of my thousands of my, my audience, that's even better. But realistically, if I could just get two. But at the end of the day, even if no one out there, I still got me. One person will always get something out of these videos. That one person will be me. One person will get something out of doing the interviews on Neighborhood Road. That person will be me. But I know that I certainly touched a few people's hearts today. Because they asked me, could you please just come down here once a week to give hope to those people who have nobody I can call during times of need. That hope will be fulfilled by me. I will make sure that whoever wants one of my cards will be able to call me and I will try to help them to the best of my ability to whatever problems they have. Problems like addiction with alcohol, problems like addiction with drugs. I will be there to help and I will do that pro bono to start with. I will do that for the next sun nine Sundays folks and if I can get even 10% of my audience to do the same to walk in your community somewhere go to your laundromats to the bingo halls and to just talk about the two issues that are so so uh, high on uh, being advertised uh, on these videos and that would be fighting addiction and your higher power I will never just talk about one because one has to be there with the other I will never just talk about fighting addiction because I can't without my higher power. I probably could talk about just God, but the purpose of these videos is to teach you how to live with your addiction. So I combine both. And folks, for those naysayers that are out there, since you became sober, let's say you only found God because of sobriety, so let it be. At least you found God. Because the, those same naysayers are the ones, like in the Bible, that threw rocks at Christians and spit in their face, in some cases executed them. Because they are so upset of your found happiness. But eventually, hopefully, they'll find that same happiness. In the meantime, you just walk straight up in that path that God wants you to walk and continue witnessing about addiction how to fight it how to live with it and if you are addicted and you want to start fighting get in touch with me i'm gonna i usually don't give my phone number over and over but today of all days i feel i have to 631-599-0218 that's my text phone number 804-405-HELP simple help 405 help 844-405 help Email me, clearreform at yahoo, C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo. Just email me there. I will be there no matter what to help you. And if you're so far away that we can't talk other than possibly a phone, we can set up Skype for you on your computer where we can have one-on-one -on -one interaction visually. And I will go set up a program over the camera with you where we can work step-by-step. And it's not a one-time thing because we need to concentrate on your future. I need to concentrate on my future daily. So we'll work together on this, folks. So we talked about the seven things to boost your happiness. And let's just recap. 
You need to start laughing, and like this said, even if it's a fake laugh, start ha uh, laughing. It will help you in so many different ways. Ways like it'll give you less chance of having a second heart attack if you had that first one. 8% of people never had a heart attack again after learning how to laugh. 42% did that never laughed before. Start changing your attitude. And that will, you'll see a difference automatically when you accept the Lord into your life, when you reach up to your higher power for guidance and direction. You'll start seeing changes in your attitude, your personality. Let God be the driver of your car. Take, give him the wheel. I remember uh, Carrie Underwood. She said it best in her song, Jesus, take the wheel. And that's exactly what you need to do. You become the passenger of your life. Let God take you and then take you wherever he feels that he needs to take you. What God took me now was to Neighborhood Road. My intentions was to go into that church today. But for some reason, I felt uncomfortable um, for the situation that I was in to sit in that church and uh, try to do my, my mission that I had planned. My, my goal was to witness to people for addiction. So... God somehow told me, just go walk the streets, and that's what I did. So start changing your attitude. Learn from people who are already happy. There are people in your life that you know are happy. But there's a difference between being happy sober and those happy people that because they're intoxicated. So make sure that you separate those two. Work less if you financially can. I'm not saying move to Denmark, but I'm saying if you financially can, work less, do it. Build up your social network. Truly have one friend that you can lean on. But you need to build it up anyway, but truly one friend you can lean on. Volunteer. If you're on Long Island, you're anywhere in Shirley, Master Beach, any one of those locations, or anywhere in Long Island, reach out to me and I'll try to help you to find places that you can volunteer. And if you're watching me where, wherever in the US, I know Canada, uh, Germany, Spain, if you're watching me there, find volunteering in your community, hospital, nursing homes, food lines, the Red Cross, homeless shelters. There is opportunity out there. And what do you get out of it? You get a couple things. You get self-esteem building up. You get the knowledge knowing that God is looking down at you and loving the fact that you are doing the right thing for your fellow humans. You get the, the sheer fact of knowing that you are a good person. Focus on experiences, no matter what your experiences were. Focus on them. Don't pay attention to anything that's worth uh, money, like cars and furniture. And pay more attention on family, on memories. That's it. Folks, today was a really good uh, segment. Uh, I hope that my... Uh, Testifying on Neighborhood Road spreads into your community no matter where you are. If you just take one hour a week and do that. If you are already fighting addiction, congratulations. Keep going. If you are not at this point fighting addictions and you're still addicted, get in contact with me. Let me try to help you. 844-405-HELP, uh, 631-599-0218. Get in touch with me. I will help you. And I will help you on the earthly side of things and reach to your God for the spiritual side of it. Because you can't do one without the other. To my friend up New Hampshire, I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope you can reach out to me. Give me a text. Go on Facebook. Send me a private message. For my friend up in Alaska, um, I'm not sure what you're up to. Uh, hopefully everything's going well. Reach out to me. And to my audience, it's always a pleasure to sit here and speak to you folks. And I hope that uh, whatever I did speak of today sinks in. And I hope that uh, we continuously uh, work on our addiction, as I will. And uh, if you need any recommendations on how to battle your addiction, or you need any advice, you can also reach out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez. He does have the uh, coaching um a side of him, which is 844-414-8444. Uh, and if you want to become a coach, uh, personality, professionalism, and passion, and some addiction background, be helpful, whether it's your own or a loved one. 
Dr. Luis Gonzalez, www.startingplintmn.com, 844-414-8444. Reach out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez, and you can always reach out to me, and you can always find me. Folks, let the sunshine into your heart and into your home to get nothing but overwhelming positive results. Get rid of the darkness and the negativity around you and start today with positive thoughts, positive actions, and a positive day. And always remember that a sober today will definitely guarantee you a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you in your head and in your heart, it will become clear wherever you are. Hopefully, I'll be doing another video tomorrow with the grace of God. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by. And please have a sober rest of the day. And God bless you.